another happy customer. They just sold that one. Hey folks, and welcome to a beautiful Friday here in Bang San. I'm on my way down to the Chonburi Cub House, and we're going to look at the uh, the new version of the Super Cub, known as the CT125, which is kind of the, I guess, the son or grandson of the CT90 or CT110, old iconic uh, iconic bikes that Honda built. And I'll tell you a little bit about those and kind of what this thing is, and we'll take a look at it, and, and we'll look at the Cub House here. So uh, let's just get started. So this isn't this isn't actually a, a big bike or anything to, to be showy in or anything like that, but it has a function, it has a use, and for that function and that use, it's very adept. And that would be off-road, specifically trail, trail riding. You may also know, you know, Honda has a great reputation for quality quality motorcycles and it, that just didn't happen overnight or by accident one of the one of the bikes that helped garner that reputation is this one right here I remember the the Trail 70, I, that's more of a mini bike. Uh, but the CT90, CT110, um, classic, iconic bikes. And to see it redesigned with the fuel injected engine, front and rear disc brakes, uh, all the modern conveniences, uh, it's, it's a little moving and I like it. Um, there was a time when this bike reigned king uh, for trail, kind of off-road uh, riding. Sometime in the 70s or 80s, we we got kind of hooked on enduro bikes. Enduro bikes became a thing, but they got big and they got heavy. And a lot of them kind of got more street-oriented and gave up some of their soul on the way, some of their off-road prowess. Um, was kind of exchanged for, I guess, a more, a more stylish uh, street kind of experience. But I think uh, with that scene kind of come and gone, I think people are wanting to go back to something, something a little bit um, more familiar, a, a little bit simpler. Uh, the product that was basically just the, the bare bones. Um, get the job done, last forever, bulletproof kind of machine. And I think that's what we have here. So welcome to the Chonbury Cub House. They specialize in selling Honda Cubs, Super Cubs, and also the Honda Monkey Bike. Uh, this is right on the main Dragon Bong Sand. The, the location will be in the description below. But it's also a little bit, uh, a little bit like a cafe in here too. Really kind of a neat, kind of a neat place. You can get coffee and stuff. We'll look at that in a minute. But these guys right here are the reason we're here today. So meet the Honda CT125, a basically uh, lightweight, rugged, go anywhere, small motorcycle, specifically engineered for off-road use, so utility. There's, you can see the rack on the back there. Uh, it's single cylinder, air cooled, automatic clutch. Uh, it does have four gears. You do have to shift the gears, but there's no clutch to worry about. But I've actually gotten s several requests from subscribers to take a look at this because I believe this is also coming to the U.S. So, not sure about that. Let me know. Um, but let's take a closer look and look at some features and also uh, maybe some features that, uh, that they left out. So, I, I think the only thing that's missing, and if you know these bikes, if you... If you follow them, if you've ever had one, if you've ever ridden one, you'll know what I'm talking about. But I guess I would compare it to uh, almost like a transfer case on a pickup truck, a high-low gear range. 
and they left that off this. It used to be, I think it was right down here on the left side of the bike by the, uh, by the shifter right here. There would have been a switch in this area over here and you could switch from high to low. So if you're going up a steep hill, rocky trail, you could uh, opt down to the low gear. And if you're gonna be on the street or something like that, you would put it in high, of course. Most of the time it would be in high. But I always thought that was the party piece of this, this bike. And it's gone. So I guess that's mildly disappointing. I don't know, let me know what you think about that. If you had one of these, did you use that feature? Um, would you like to see it return? Now keep in mind, this is a bigger, bigger engine, the uh, 125cc. And another thing I guess worth mentioning is what I'm told, and I don't know how it works, but this air box right here, this is to keep you out of the water. So when you go swamping, your, your air is basically being intake from a high, higher level. But that somehow restricts the air a little bit. But the result of that is actually brilliant. It uh, decreases overall horsepower, but it increases low end torque, which is exactly what you need in a bike like this. And that was the purpose of the high low gear selector to provide more torque to that rear wheel when you needed it for hills in certain circumstances. So maybe it has enough torque where you don't need it. I don't know. I would just, uh, I would have just liked it if, if they had that. I thought that was cool. Um, these are these are basically your two colors. They call this one a gray. It looks almost like a it's almost like a light brown to me. It's probably just my eyes in this light. Uh, and of course you have the iconic red. Uh, but you got a kick start in addition to an electric start. You got this totally shielded exhaust high. You could probably put this thing through 18 inches of water. Uh, all of these things are well thought out and executed uh, to maximize your, your use off-road. Even the front forks have these dust covers so you don't have dirt and grit and dust getting in the the forks between the, uh, the seals, just like this here. They don't look like much, but they're very functional. Um, this engine guard, highly functional, keep all the rocks and uh, everything. Also, it'll prevent, uh, if you go through some kind of tall, dry grass, it's not gonna hit that hot exhaust manifold pipe or uh, anything hot and catch fire. Everything has been kind of engineered for that eco-friendly, but highly functional off-road experience. So let's, uh, let's find out how much they want for them. Hey, how much is it? It's about 84,900 baht. So yeah, it's... Uh, Right at about 85,000 baht. At today's exchange rate, you're looking at right around 2,750 US dollars to ride one away. Okay, so it is about the same price as the, as the regular Cub. Uh, I guess the, the Super Cub, not the, there's a, there's a Super Cub and then there's just like the regular Cub. This would be a Super Cub here. And you can see, you know, alloy wheels, they're no good for off-road. Uh, tires aren't, aren't don't have all that extra traction for uh, gravel and things like that. You have more fairings to keep the wind off of you. This one's got a fancy seat, uh, chain guard. It, this is this is your road bike, but this is within a couple thousand baht of the CT125. But there it is. So in case that isn't enough, I guess we can take a really, really close look at them.
So yeah, does this bike make sense for Thailand? Uh, we'll answer that question as we help ourselves to a little look around the store here. Um, I think it does, especially if you live uh, maybe up country um, in, a, in a village. A lot of these places have roads that are, are unpaved, either gravel, packed down uh, dirt, whatever. You might have to traverse those types of roads every day just getting to and from your house. A bike like this makes perfect sense. In fact, it might be ideal. Rated at, uh, I think it's rated at uh, 100 kilometers per gallon. Uh, they also have a bigger fuel tank on this bike. It's, uh, I think, 5.4 liters. All the specs uh, are online uh, for this bike, but I, I think it would make sense, just depending on what you want. Even if you hadn't lived in an urban environment but just wanted something real rugged and something that would last, you know, not a lot of cheap, flimsy plastic, that kind of stuff, it, it might be the bike for you. But um, all this look around here... Uh, Kind of made me hungry. Uh, let's go get something to eat. Mmm. Boy, home. Home. Mmm. I think that one young lady got a got a full whiff of the uh, frying chili. That will uh, that will clear your sinuses out real quick. But this little place is right around the corner from me. My kind of place, 40, 50, 60 baht, and uh, she's gonna just fry this up for us. It's gonna be good. It's gonna be tasty. Yeah, so this is what we got here. I got a gang pet guy. That's a, a chicken uh, kind of fried up in some chili paste. And she put cauliflower in it as well for the vegetable. Not my first choice, but it was okay. And you can always add a little extra chili there. That's lovely. And then we got a caprao mu. That's a pork served with a basil and chili. Uh, also a very nice savory dish. We each got a... We just got a fried egg on the side there because it was kind of like a brunch. They call that kai dao. So at 50 baht a plate uh, for two plates, and then we each got a, a fried egg. That's 10 baht extra. It's 120 baht. So I enjoyed the, the little look here at the CT125. I, I'm just blown away by the styling and how much it looks like the original uh, CT90, CT110s. Um, I... I logged a fair amount of miles on an old 90 myself, and we used to we used to thrash it within an inch of its life. But at the end of the day, it would always uh, take it like a champ and and basically say, "Thank you, sir. May I have another?" That's that kind of bike. Um, and you know, would I buy it um, if I lived in a small village somewhere, a lot of dirt roads? I, I, I very well may, just for running around, running little errands, going into town, and so forth. Um, but anyway. I'll let you decide. But let me know what you think. Uh, let me know if that's something you would buy. Uh, but anyway, I guess I will go ahead and leave this episode off here. It's Friday late morning. Uh, the onslaught has not started yet. I'm sure it will be a very busy weekend here in Bang San once all the, once all the folks from Bangkok make their way down here. I, I might even go out and have a look and see what's doing this weekend if it, if it turns out real busy and might take you guys along. But... Um, Anyway, as usual, I will thank you for watching, and until next time, bye for now. Oh, yeah.